Coming up in this episode of Beneath the Surface, presented by Rockwell, we visit the UK's first national marine park and discover the technology at the heart of its revolution. We'll see what businesses in Plymouth are doing to make themselves more sustainable, and our sailors take on the latest rock challenge. One of the coolest things about SailGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the SailGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time we're in a city famous for its marine heritage, Britain's ocean city itself, Plymouth. We return to Britain's Ocean City for the Great Britain Sail Grand Prix, racing in the stunning natural amphitheatre of Plymouth Sound for the second time. Australia's LGP team lead the way when it comes to the racing, with Denmark's LGP team just out of the podium places in fifth. And Plymouth is without doubt one of the best places to watch the boats racing on the SailGP circuit. Now, just over a year ago, in this very spot, SailGP announced its groundbreaking Impact League initiative, designed to run alongside the on-water racing championship. The league tracks all teams on positive impact, reduction of carbon footprint, and also acceleration of inclusivity in the sport. And it got me thinking, I wonder what local businesses in Plymouth are doing to help save the planet, but also create a more sustainable future in this city and beyond. Here's Plymouth in 60 seconds. I'm here at Home Park, the stadium of Plymouth Argyle, the local football club which is green on and off the field. The stadium redirects rainwater from the roof of the stand to water the pitch, saving more than 40,000 litres of water every year. And with 225 solar panels on the roof of the Mayflower stand behind me, saving 52 tonnes of carbon per year, the Pilgrims are well on their way to their net zero carbon emissions target by 2050. This is the oldest working distillery in England, but it's a brand looking to the future. Plymouth Gin has cut all single-use plastic from its packaging and reduced the weight of the glass by 15%, saving 60 tonnes of carbon per year. Almost two decades ago, the University of Plymouth was the first in the world to recognise the devastating impacts of microplastic particles on the world's ocean. Today we know that these particles make their way into the human body via the food chain. And the university is ranked number one on the planet for the United Nations Sustainability Goal number 14, Life Below Water. And that's Plymouth in 60 seconds. Hi, Katja here. If you want to win some team gear, count the total number of 50s that appear in the screen here. Put your answer in the comments box below and we will announce the winner in Beneath the Service. Good luck. Now, Plymouth is a city of world first and it started way back in the day in 1770 when Captain Cook discovered Australia after setting off from the Plymouth Sound behind me. More recently, Sir Francis Chichester became the first person to sail single-handedly around the globe, departing and finishing in this patch of water. And now the city is set to reignite its love affair with the sea, with the launch of the UK's first ever National Marine Park an initiative that's received more than £9.5 million of funding from the National Lottery and given Plymouthians an opportunity to get to know the ocean a little bit better. We have seen over the last 10 years or so that a lot of people have turned their back to the sea and yet we are an island nation. And there are some really good reasons why people don't come to the beach. Some of it's uncertainty, some of it's not being able to swim. And we really want to understand how we can fix those problems. A marine park is basically a park in the sea. So it's somewhere where people can come and enjoy, they can swim, they can do activities. So it's a place where people can really celebrate everything that's good about being out and about near the sea. They can have a go at various different kinds of water sports, things that they probably wouldn't have thought to try. The marine parks that currently exist are very much about protect. Yes, we want to protect, but actually, we want to make sure that our people can come and enjoy it. So access is really important. From the economic point of view, tourists love to come to places that are beautiful. So by being able to say, we're a national marine park, people actually understand what those words mean. And we want to be able to sort of act as the people who provide the roadmap for others. Plymouth is quite unique being a city on the sea with the biggest naval base in Western Europe. So if we can do it in Plymouth, well, pretty much anybody should be able to follow our lead. We've been doing lots of work with uh, local dive clubs, local photographers, because 
but actually accessing under the water is much more difficult. So for us, that's a big part of it, so actually being able to show and tell. Plymouth Sound, which you can see behind you, is possibly the most protected body of water we have in this country. So we've got battle wrecks under sea, we've got over 600 wrecks, and they're actually fabulous for the marine life because they provide a three-dimensional structure in the sea, but it is under pressure. We all know the climate's changing and we need to be really careful. We are looking at developing what we call the digital park, and that can be everything from virtual reality tours through to little quizzes to filming and so on. And then wrap into that all of the amazing science that happens here in the city, um, which includes actually having a boy that monitors all of our salinities and tides and so on. And you can have real time data back at the university, which anyone can go and look at. And the only way you get people to change their behaviours and protect things that are valuable and important is to help them enjoy it first. Then you help them understand why it's a cool place and then you, you encourage them to help to act. When you look out to the sound, you can see most of the National Marine Park, but you can't see what's truly lurking beneath the surface. Plymouth has a long-standing history of marine innovation. And when you dive a little bit deeper, you can see that it holds the key to the future of ocean science and marine technology. Plymouth is a global centre of excellence for marine science. There are more marine scientists in Plymouth than anywhere else in the country, and marine science in Plymouth has been at the cutting edge of the understanding of both the marine environment and particularly the impacts of man on the marine environment over the last hundred years. The concept of Smart Sand is to provide a space where we can test, validate marine autonomy and make measurements with a minimum of human interaction. And part of this is, is looking at the, the sort of the coexistence of, of how do you balance all the users of the marine environment. It provides the information to ensure that the National Park is doing what we want it to do and protect and sustain the environment. At the same time, it's also providing opportunities for business growth and development to benefit the wider city and the population of the Southwest. We have autonomous vehicles, we have data buoys, we have remote sensing, we have models. So we're capable of characterising the whole system. The uh, area outside of Plymouth, Plymouth Sound and the seas around it, are some of the most intensively sampled marine seas in the world and therefore some of the best understood. We also have very sophisticated surface communication systems, both 4 and 5G, and very shortly we'll be seeing the installation of an underwater network as well. It's unique in the fact that it is the first offshore 5G network in the country. It's available as a free point of access innovation service for commercial customers to be able to deploy their assets in the smart sound and be able to communicate what they're measuring back in real time. PML and smart sound are going to make a contribution to SailGP and we're going to provide real time information on wind speed and direction. We're also going to be providing information from the boys on wave height and direction as well. So it's really where sport meets science. Understanding our ocean is key to protecting it in the face of our changing planet and no one knows this better than Lewis Pugh, an endurance swimmer, the UN patron of the oceans and of course a Plymouthian. Lewis is back in his home city working with SailGP. Our oceans are so valuable. We're now in a race against time to save our oceans. I mean, you start thinking on land, you start thinking about these great big national parks. So, for example, Serengeti in Africa or Yellowstone in America. These were created because people had the vision and they realized if we don't protect these places, the wildlife and these places will be gone forever. And that's the situation which we face in our oceans. And so this initiative here in Plymouth, where we're trying to get all the people involved here in this area, get them all together and say to them, how do we properly protect this area, which is so precious? I think SailGP is really super exciting. Sports people are by far the most influential in society, by a long way. Sport does have a big impact on the environment. We as sports people can't keep quiet any longer. We all have to play a role in protecting the environment. And so that's why I think it's so exciting that there's a trophy for the Impact League and there's a trophy for the winner of the Sail GP. But finally, these two things, we realize that they are both as important in sport as each other. And to round off our story about the National Marine Park, our Denmark SailGP team will of course be racing out in Plymouth Sound, drawing in thousands of spectators as SailGP comes to Britain's ocean city. It's really cool for Rockwell to be sailing in Plymouth because we have had so many projects here for regeneration 
of the urban environment, but also for energy efficiency, which is so essential for our energy consumption and the reduction of energy use. So it's great to be able to see these projects physically for the first time. So winning the Impact League in Chicago obviously meant a lot to Rockwell and to the team and we come into Plymouth as an overall leader in the Impact League after one year of this actually being launched here from Plymouth. So we're really excited about that. It's important for Rockwell because everything we do is about enriching modern living and making cities more sustainable. So as a company we came in and learned a lot about the little things that everybody can do in their everyday life and now we've applied that to the team and hence we're coming out with much better results which we're very proud of. And now added to that, we have our partnership with the One Ocean Foundation. And of course, we give now equal weight to protecting our air quality just as much as we do to protecting our oceans. Welcome to this edition of the Rock Challenge here from Great Britain Sail Grand Prix in Plymouth. Last event in Chicago, we had our sailors on a slippery surface at the Black Hawks. This time we're back on terra firma. And what a carpet it is too. We're here at Harpers Park, which is the Plymouth Argyle training ground. And we're going to see how our sailors get on with a football sail GP mashup. Our athletes are used to the demands of the sail GP race course. They cross the start line, go through some gates and head for the finish. So we've replicated this on a football pitch. It's a simple race against the clock. Get the ball around the course, shoot at the goal from outside the box and when it crosses the line, they set a time. And they have three attempts to set the fastest lap. There's only one caveat. If the ball hits any of these three well-known sailors, they get a time penalty, and an especially large one if you hit the big boss, Sir Russell Coots. It's a good challenge, this one, because we, uh, we can't hit anybody, and uh, I think that's going to be the worst one. I'm a little worried with the, all of them. If, uh, if you hit their head, I don't know what would happen. I think I'm a team player, but uh, it's still a competition. I think I could have some more training, and it's a uh, it's long, long time since I played football, and uh, I never played that high level. One. <laughs> and the winner of this episode's football versus Cell GP challenge is Raz. <laughs> I think uh, it was a pretty tough one, but uh, luckily enough, uh, Hansi he uh, helped me out a bit with the. Uh, with the failing a couple of attempts, so uh, I was cruising in, but they uh, made it hard for myself in the end. Okay, that's all from this episode of Beneath the Surface in Plymouth. We're about to go racing now on the second day at the Great Britain Sail Grand Prix. To watch all the action, head to sailgp.com. <laughs>